this is a good, um, this is how my life is right now. Uh, here, let me uh, fix this. Hey, Monkey Shine Lab, how are you? How you been? Where you been? What have you been doing? I haven't been doing much at all. But that changes today. Come along for it. So, um, cheesy music to the side for a minute. Um, I, I've been, I'm going to make an admission to my audience. Um, I've, I've been, I've been down a really deep rabbit hole. Uh, Fortnite has been aggravating. And I just, I happened to notice another free to play game, which they're not. <laughs> if, at, if at the very least they're taking hours of sleep away from you. So uh, yeah, I've been down the War Thunder uh, rabbit hole lately and it's um, it's made by an extremely predatory uh, game maker called Gaijin. And uh, the reason why I refer to them as predatory is because that's what the rest of the world considers them. Um, they are originally a phone app um, creator, so everything is sort of centered around microtransaction and the difficulty of the game is set so that if you're a normal human being you just freak out and spend money to try to advance which is also a dumb idea because even though they have made it seem like spending money will make things any easier it doesn't and they also engage in no, I'm gonna call it what it is they engage in gambling where you can play these tokens that they'll give you and then you've got to uh, you know make an, a certain amount of kills or whatever in a game drop a certain amount of aircraft or whatever and then they'll they'll give you, you know, like a certain amount of payoff. The, the tasks are always impossible for new players, but you try. And if you are any sort of thinking human being, this process aggravates you into either quitting or spending money. And I'm not good at the game seriously not good at this game um, but it's it's fun you know uh, and I think that that's that's the key to anything as a hobby is to keep it on the fun side to keep it on the cheap um, you know if something's not fun don't do it so uh, saying that let's go into target there's something I didn't know was gonna happen Plastic Man is the Build-A-Figure. That's pretty cool. I like that. I'm not going to get the whole set just to get them put together, but it's cool that somebody's doing it. Cool. <laughs> Muhammad 
Ali. That doesn't remotely look like him. <laughs> Lou Albano, Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Lunacy. <sighs> and... Wow, do they just not care Fortnite here anymore, I guess? I assume that's what it is. Hmm. This place is utterly destroyed. And, um, not a lot of interesting. In fact, nothing. Well, it could not be any less interesting. So I thought it was kind of raining a little hard while I was um, going through my phone and looking for something. And, um, yeah. So I'm going to wait this out, maybe. Anyway, thank you very much uh, to Radar Toys. That's at 1440 Lancaster Drive, Northeast, here in Salem. Thank you very much, Radar, for um, shielding me momentarily from the hail and uh, selling me a couple comics, which I will show you at the end of the uh, at the end of the ride here. Wow, man! Anyway, holy cow! It's like, it's some good sized hail. Far out. Springtime for Hitler and Germany. That's from the producers, Neil Simon. You can't, you can't give me any shit over that. I mean, you can, but it doesn't make a lot of sense. You know, it's a Broadway play. <sighs> anyway, uh, yeah, the producers. Yeah, that's what Springtime for Hitler is from. What? It's not like I'm saying he's a good guy or anything. I'm just saying they wrote a musical about him. True. Google is your friend. Exact same day. Blue sky. Hail then, blue sky. Honest to gosh, I love living here. But I, you know, the hail, I could do without. That's getting too close to being back in the, in the Midwest. Sorry. It must be childproof. All right. Drizzle, drazzle, drazzle drone. Time for this one to go home. I'm going to, um, I'm gonna drive home now and I will address you further from there. So here we are coming to you from, uh, you know, uh, the, the B control room. If you if you picture our house kind of like a uh, TARDIS or a uh, like the Starship Enterprise, right now um, the lab 
has saucer separated or um, in terms of the TARDIS, we're, we're in that secondary, we're in that secondary uh, control room, okay? Uh, actually known as uh, the freelance primate theater most of the time, my living room. Yeah, so, um, oh God, and, and what I was gonna talk about, I took down to the lab. See, old habits die hard. Hang on one second. Be right back. Like magic. Do you want to come up? Okay. Come on up. Come on. Axel's very, um... He's, he's very, you know, he asks. He's very polite. Um, let me just, let me just get on with this, guys. And then I will, I will get out of your way and you can continue to lick your private areas. It's one of those days trying to... Try to get a show done. I, I don't hide my life uh, from you. I, this is, <laughs> a lot of this is just, this is what goes on in my three ring circus. And I, and I don't hide it because I think that there are enough polished programs in the world out there. <laughs> see, see it warts and all. Um, speaking of warts and all, okay. I, I didn't find a lot of die cast today. Um, I didn't find a lot to film either. It was just really kind of depressing. So here I am, um, you know, putting putting other things before ye. Uh, one of which I forgot to talk about the other day. Um, I picked this up and these are, in Walmart, sometimes they will have the bagged stuff is up above the locked cabinets. Look up above on the top, there's usually a basket in my Walmart that had uh, these Mars Rovers in there. I kind of feel like this is one of those things that if they, if Lego had been around um, at the time of the moon landing, you know, that we could have had, and, and they did eventually do those things, of course, but um, this is in real time, if you will, uh, history that's going on. We have technically achieved a rover that doesn't, you know, fall apart and burp and hiccup. We have our own little Wally -E up on, on Mars. But anyway, um, I'm gonna build this and I'm thinking about picking some of these up for my grandkids because I do have the Hot Wheels Mars Landers um, here somewhere but uh, I do have the Mars uh, the cars put aside for um, our older boys because it happened you know like basically at the time of their birth was when we landed on Mars with this rover and so I thought you know I should really kind of pick up some of those and put them in a box and bury it deep um, you know and and then when they're older you know, here's here's a little sort of memento from the actual year that it landed and everything, you know. Uh, call me crazy, but um, I, I look at some of these achievements um, with the same sort of amazement. You know, I look at uh, drone stuff that we're doing uh, a, a, on other planets in our solar system as, um, almost a greater achievement because it's being um, motivated by programming and by remote access at that distance, which just blows my mind, you know? Um, anyway, um, so there's the, there's the rover. Um, the other thing that I picked up was um, I did go to uh, my good friends over at uh, Radar Toys who provide me with a moment or two of conversation and lower my blood pressure greatly. Um, they're really nice folks in there and they do a really nice job um, selling comic books. So <laughs> let's see if I can get these in order. Um, I have the first of this series, and it is apparently a four-issue miniseries, but um, 
one of the things that uh, really kind of intrigued me was, and you can't really see it from this cover too much, but you will on the next one here, um, the, the sort of Will Eisner-esque um, artwork. Uh, Will Eisner is the, uh, he did the spirit and uh, stuff like that. And uh, anyway, if you saw some of his stuff, you would be like, oh yeah, okay, so, of course, I know, I know Will Eisner. Um, but anyway, uh, kind of intriguing. Um, I also, I thought the guy in the white hood was a bit extreme. You're just not gonna see that <laughs> as a character design, I bet. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm sure this, this is not a dude in a white hood, okay? I don't know, but I'm pretty sure. Um, but I do, I do collect stuff from uh, the 70s and 80s in terms of comic books, and especially in the 70s, the Nazis, uh, the Nazi regime, and um, the Japanese uh, incursions and stuff like that were were still fairly recent history. So. Um, they did a lot of comic books that were set in World War II. You know, nowadays, if they do something in those time periods, they they uh, try not to put a swastika on the cover of a comic book. Um, but I have, I have many, um, and it's just it's just not you know. And I I'm not I'm not saying gee I wish. I wish the good old days had come back where we could see Nazi regalia on, on comic books. Don't get me wrong. Um, I just find it to be a cultural weirdness that happens, you know? Uh, as they say, uh, the victors write the, write the history books, you know? I have many friends in Japan. I have many friends in Germany. I don't feel that either nation uh, should be judged for something that happened, you know, 80 years ago. Um, I don't think the people of those cultures now should be judged for what happened in the past. Um, you know, the old joke of all friends now, but we are. Um, I am, anyway. I, the only thing, the only the only people that I ever make fun of, okay, with, with any American attitude is the French. I, I'm not going to get into it, but it's the only joke. It's the only <laughs> culture on the planet that I will make jokes about. Anyway. Um, <laughs> And I'm sorry, if you if you are of French extraction or you are French, I I apologize. Man, I'm just I'm gonna have to cut all this out. I won't. But I should I don't know. I don't know. You get all the angry French people. <laughs> here's a here's an interesting story actually from the early days of my channel here because a lot of you uh, sort of probably missed out on this. Although, like all things internet, it's there forever and it's still there if you want to go back. But in season one, I reviewed a film that I really actually super liked. Uh, a, a cheesy, extremely violent, improbable science fiction film called um, Sky Sharks. And you can see this now, there's a copy of it now on Tubi. So if you have the Tubi application and you are able to access Tubi, I think you could, if you're outside of the States, you could do it using a VPN. You can get the Tubi app and, and, and see this for free. Um, and I, and I advise that you do, by the way, it's one of those films that I was absolutely like, it's, uh, I, it may even be the first, what is wrong with you review, which is, which are all these movies that are, you know, <laughs> tasteless in one way or another that people are going to object to. 
Um, but anyway, Sky Sharks, I put up this review and I, here's how stupid I am with technology sometimes. I hadn't thought that anybody involved with the production would, you know, search the movie and see what people were saying about it. I, for some odd reason, I kind of figured like I would put up this video and it would just die in the ether like all the rest of my work. Um, <laughs> But the director uh, came into the comments and he had some very nice things to say, but it, it was also like, I had made this joke about the film being made in Germany or uh, it was either Germany or Austria, excuse me. I can't remember which, and I apologize. I'm almost certain that it's a German film originally. Uh, most of it isn't in English dialogue, so it, uh, you know, and I, I think they, the ones that weren't, they, they dubbed them even. But I digress. The director comes into the comments on this and gives me the old wink. And it, Cause I had made a joke about Germans and, and poop jokes, you know? Cause, uh, you know, if you've watched South Park or whatever else, you know, the Shiza videos and, and things. But I, I, I had said that there, uh, this, this movie had a lot of objectionable material in it, but it, but it didn't have any, any people getting pooped on. And, you know, this is, this is the, the clarity of my journalism. Uh, <clears throat> and, you know, here comes the director, like less than a day later, too. And I, and I was really like, First of all, I was complimented, but I also, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I did not mean to offend this, this person directly. And I, and I still, to this day, I think that the director sort of was in on it and understands that I was amazingly positive about the film. Again, it's called Sky Sharks. Um, and I, I own it on DVD. I bought it, I bought it way back when uh, when it came out on DVD and I found it on Amazon and I bought it immediately. I was just like, oh, I've got to see this. And it turns out it was one of the better DVDs purchases that I've ever made in the last five years. But anyway, that's why I don't, <laughs> that's why I don't make any direct jokes about French people here on this show. I'm, <clears throat> it's just sort of a, it's a good natured thing and I would like to apologize now after all of this topic. I'd like to apologize if you are uh, a member of uh, the French culture or, uh, you know, current or past, I apologize. I do not mean to make jokes that in a mean-spirited way. That, that should never happen. Okay. Uh, the last two. <laughs> last. Wow, was that a... I would, man. All right. The last two that I picked up. Um, I am, you know, super down with the uh, Black Knight recently. And so I am going to... Uh, pick up as many of these from the different eras as, as I can. This is a fairly recent, um, it may be one of those sort of reprints of uh, past stuff that they were trying to push the character at the time the Eternals came out. So I would probably say it's probably from around those, you know, what, 2014, 2015. When did that movie come out, the Eternals? I don't even remember. I just know I liked it, but that's a big rabbit hole we're not gonna get into right now. <laughs> and the last one, um, they had a whole bunch of uh, uh, comic stock that they've put out at Radar. And so I've been going through and finding some, some cool gems. I love Firestorm as a character and Firestorm versus Mr. Freeze. Yeah, yeah, come on, right? 
All right. That's that, folks. Please, if uh, if you like the uh, what you've seen and heard here today, get help. But no, I, I, if you uh, if you liked what you've seen, uh, please hit the subscribe button. That gives you notifications as to when we'll have another video up, which is usually every day. Although, like I said, I have been sucked down the War Thunder rabbit hole and I play like a, a half hour of it a day, every day. It's just that, you know, I gotta plug in and play. And like I said, I haven't even gotten to the tanks. I'm just trying to do one tech ladder of American airplanes. Hard enough, I'm trying to figure that out. Anyway, uh, if you like what you've seen, please hit the subscribe button, hit a like. If you liked it, and uh, please, please leave a comment. Brian uh, Bender out there, um, I'm super surprised about uh, some of the stuff that you put up in the comment section about uh, surgery and stuff. Please be on the mend. Um, I say that because you are a huge part of so many different channels, mine and Mazar and, and all of us, you are always commenting. And so please, please get on the well. I mean that absolutely and unconditionally, please. We can't afford to lose. <laughs> we can't afford to lose neighbors like you in our community here. Um, and I know N Nazar would probably say the exact same thing. So uh, anyway, folks, thank you very much for coming out here to Monkey Shine Lab and we will see you again very, very soon. Probably tomorrow. Bye.